The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. we got some earnings out for Lowe's and Macy's, both of those companies trading lower already in the pre-market. We kick things off with markets in the green, with the S&Ps up by five points right now, trading at 5,085. We're about 10 points off of the lows that you made last night. NASDAQ 100, we're up by 42 points, 18,018. Dow, only major index currently in the red right now. You're negative by 31 points, 39,083. And how about the Russell? Catching a bid, up by 9 tenths percent, 18 points in the positive at 2,050. Speaking of catching a bid, Bitcoin, whew, from 52,000 to 57.5 in the last, what is that, 24 hours, man? It has been a one-way rocket ship. Bitcoin, up by a couple thousand bucks. Yeah, yeah. That's in the last 24 hours, man. I had to recalibrate. You're talking about 9 o'clock yesterday. We had a 51,000 handle. We just hit a 58,000 handle. These are 15-minute bars on Bitcoin. You're up by 4%. Take a longer-term picture on Bitcoin, man. Just having a conversation with Robert from Kansas City. I think that was Friday. Boy, quite the acceleration. One of the things we were talking about was saying, man, you know, maybe that was the exhaustion pullback. You got the, BT, uh, the Bitcoin ETFs, the spot ETFs approved. On January 11th, you had a pullback for a period of 12 days, and since then, you've traded from 38,000 up to 58,000 in Bitcoin. Remarkable. Crude continued volatility. You had a little bit of a pullback in crude to 77.20, but check it out, man. We are up about a dollar from the lows of about 7 a.m. We're back above $78. We've been talking about $78 in crude. Look where we're pumping up against, man. Critical area area for that crude contract, just above $78. You hit a high of 79.29 back in January. Since then, though, we've just been chopping around. You're talking about basically two full weeks. February 13th was when we had the bar that went to 78.47. We're sitting at 78.07 right now for the price of crude. You jump to gold up by $5 at 2044 right now for the gold contract. We got some action in notes and bonds. You had a little bit of Higher price and lower yield, that's backed off a bit. We are still up by about two ticks right now in the 10-year. And you jump over, that's going to put you to a yield of about 4.29%. The yield on the 10-year right now, you jump over to the dollar index, the DXY, backing off a bit. So what have we seen? We've seen a little bit of lower yield. We've seen a little bit of weaker dollar. That, of course, putting a little bit of a bid in the gold contract. We're at 2045. We were almost up to 2050. We hit 2053 on Friday. Take a look at the gold contract. February 14th, 13 days ago, we hit 1996. Since then, we're up almost $50 at 2044. Yields, currencies, the dollar in particular, gold in particular, all of them. Moving as you may expect, we jump over to the dollar yen right now. Dollar yen, 150.29. Put it on a short term time frame. Quite a little pullback from where we were just yesterday, right? 150.83. And just like that, we hit 150.11. And then you just spike to an area of 150.15 on the dollar yen. We jump over to the VIX, volatility index, continuing to drop at 1361 right now. All right, we mentioned Macy's and Lowe's out with their numbers. Macy's, you're going to drop about 50 cents. Not a huge move. You see the volatility on their numbers at 7 a.m. this morning, up to 2060, down to 1775. We're trading right now at 1930. You jump over to Lowe's, a little bit of a, a pullback there as well. You're down about $8 on Lowe's. You spiked to 239. You back off that conference call just beginning as I came on the air at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Lowe's right now down about $4. And we jump around. We'll kick it off with those two equities, Macy's. Another quarter of falling sales unveils the strategy to get back to growth. Sales fell nearly 2% in the holiday quarter, forecast another year of stagnant sales. It's a tough one, man. Earnings, though, 245 versus a buck 96. Revenue is a miss there, though. 
you can't keep growing earnings if you keep dropping in revenue, right? Eventually, that reaches a tipping point that you can't just cut to make more money on less revenue on the top line. You can't take it to the bottom line if it's not growing on the top line. Net sales, 22.2 to 22.9, down from 23.09 billion for the entire of 2023. Comp sales, decline of 1.5% to a gain of 1%, 1.5%. So basically they're gonna expect flat to plus or minus one and a half percent. And yeah, they plan to close about 150 unproductive locations, pri prioritize investing in about 350 other namesake locations. They got a tough go around, man. You jump over to Macy's, take a look at the longer term picture. There's your three year weekly. Let's back it up even further than that to get a real illustration of this company. You reach a high of 73.61 in July of 2015. We'll call that the heyday of malls. Yeah, and then you drop to $4, man. Now remember, you came into COVID in deep despair already, okay? 40 bucks in August of 2018 to Macy's shares trading at $12 in February of 2020. COVID hits, you drop to $4 and change. You run up with everything in this market up to $37.95 towards the end of 2021, but be careful of Macy's, man, okay? You just take a look at this thing. Watch this. Let's look at this earlier. This is a monthly, but let's back things up on a three-year weekly. You get the spike high at $37.95, but even taking a couple of weeks out of that bar, out of that chart, you're talking about lower lows and lower highs, folks, across the board. You know, where this exactly falls, but you see how these all line up there. You're sitting in 1930. You're going to drop yet again. They have declining revenue. And how do you compete in that business going forward, especially if you have overhead to a certain degree, which they do, like every company? Very difficult. We jump to Lowe's. Speaking of difficult, man, Lowe's. They're going to drop about four bucks. No huge dramatic move. You're talking about only, what, percent and a half on the open, basically? You jump over to the Analyzed tab and you're talking about an $8 move priced in to their earnings. Okay, so you're only going to get a $4 move. Pretty marginal move for lows. You see the chop around. You see the acceleration this thing had during COVID from $72 bucks up to $263. we have backed off a bit. You did hit the 382 twice. You hit that area back in the lows of 2022. And you see on a monthly basis, right, you kind of chopped around. You hit a low of 170 okay? The 382 was 184 but you see how those weeks kind of built. Where did we just test? Back in October, that same area, the 382. And maybe you get one more test if Lowe's is really having some problems here. A lot of that's going to be determined in terms of interest rates, housing prices, the ability to access that capital. So difficult right now with people, if you're in thinking about doing any type of home renovation, right, to access that capital as opposed to a refinance, not really an option for a lot of people when you're refinancing at a much higher rate. If that ever gets back to an area where people can begin to refinance, watch out for those equities. But we probably got a good year or so with where we are right now in terms of seeing that type of interest rate. You take a look at the longer term, S&Ps sitting right now at 5,085. We reach a high of 5,123. That high made on Friday of last week. We trailed off a bit. We got uh, S&Ps up by five to kick things off though. Stay tuned folks, we'll be coming back. We'll talk a little bit of interest rates. We'll talk a little bit of Fed. We'll take a look at some other equities moving this morning. We'll take a look at durable goods and Boeing, the outsized impact it has uh, as Boeing continuing to struggle to sell planes, impacting economic data to a dramatic degree. We'll be right back, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We've got S&P futures. You're up by five points right now, trading at 5,085. You get NASDAQ slightly in the positive, Dow right now slightly in the red. To talk about some of the market action, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market from the Schwab Network right here on Tiger TV. Check it out. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the entire team, they walk you through hypothetical trade setups, folks. They're talking options. They're talking defined risk on every trade they set up. I've learned a tremendous amount myself over the years. Kevin Hinks, this market hanging tough near 5,100. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, it's been fairly resilient in our ability to ignore yields that are creeping higher. A two-year note yield uh, touched 4.7% yesterday. The 10-year yield sitting here just below 4.3%. We got a seven-year year note auction uh, today that will get uh, the effects of about 1, 1, 1 p.m. Eastern time. So we'll see what that does. Um, we had durable goods orders that came in as a, a little weaker than expected, but we knew they were going to be down today because of, you know, Boeing's, frankly, inability to sell planes right now. Uh, so they came in down 6.1%. Ex-transportation ex down 0.3%. Core capital goods up a tenth of a percent. So, um a little bit weaker on durable goods, but like I said, we were getting ready for a big down number there because of the issues with Boeing and transportation in general. The Case Shiller and FHFA house price index, year over year, Case Shiller 6.1% higher in house prices, FHFA 6.7% higher. Uh, both of those slightly higher than expected, Tommy, so house prices are staying firm. We'll get some consumer confidence uh, here at 10 o'clock Eastern and some Richmond Fed. We'll see if that moves the market. Well. But right now, Tommy, this market is really looking forward to Thursday's income and outlays number. And I think that's the next big calendar. Yeah, you almost, uh, I appreciate that wrap up, man. A lot of great information. Pretty remarkable, as you talked about. Yields on the rise a little bit. Um, and the market, man, 5,100, but earnings driving this market in dramatic fashion. May season lows a little bit lower today, but no real dramatic pullback. I think I had lows, uh, what, $4, the expected move on the Thinkorswim platform, about $8. And you mentioned it, man. We march forward to Thursday's numbers, talking about PCE, the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. The next meeting, March 20th, um, almost three, what, three, 
just about three weeks out from where we are right now. Uh, any expectations on that number, Kevin, or where we go towards? Uh, it's going to come in maybe potentially a little bit hot. The expectations 0.4 percent for the headline and the core on a monthly basis, but that's the expectation. Uh, any thoughts on the PCE Thursday morning? Yeah, it, it, when you look at those numbers and some of the consensus numbers, the month over month are all higher, but the year over year are all expected to be slightly lower. Now, the expectations were lower for wages and CPI and PPI, and they all came in higher. So, yeah, I'm watching for if these lower number on year over year, if they come in, Tommy, the market will like that if they do, if they do especially in core PCE. But the problem is, they haven't been delivering on that in the last, you know, remember there's four looks at inflation in a month. Wages, which we'll get next Friday, uh, CPI, PPI that, that we just got, and then PCE, part of the income and outlay data. So this will be the fourth one. Let, let's see if it's higher as well. And it's pretty interesting, as you say, man, that we get wages, we get jobs. Um, it just marches that quickly. Next Friday, we get to do it all again as we get March 1st coming at you on Friday uh, this week, which is remarkable. I mean, March already. With that in mind, as I mentioned, we got some companies already out with numbers. I know we got companies still this week. They got some good names out there. Do you guys have any equities you're talking about on Fast Market coming up at 12 today, Kevin? Yeah, ahead of a big day tomorrow where we got some big names. We'll look at eBay. Like Foley will do presentations on eBay. Look at TJX. And then right now we're trying to figure out what the, the best third one is to do. So we'll see on that one. But two of the names, TJX and eBay today. Look at that TJX chart, man. My goodness. I put it on a three-year weekly. It's a one-way trip almost to higher prices. I ah, chop around, but 53 bucks back in the middle of last uh, 2022 to 99. Then you back it up on a monthly. My goodness, it really does look like a one-way trip. Uh, and then eBay, struggling a bit, um, chopping around. Kevin, I appreciate the time. As always, man, on a busy morning, we look forward to watching Fast Market at 12 today, and I look forward to talking to you tomorrow morning, man. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. Folks, check it out. You heard it. They're talking two great stocks. Uh, they'll pick a third. They always cover three. They set up those hypothetical trades. The best way to learn, man, watch them set up the trades. They manage those trades, whether it's rolling. All of them have defined risk, folks. And even if you don't plan on being some kind of multi-leg options trader, right, you can learn a tremendous amount in terms of how the market is pricing equities by understanding options. That's why I encourage you to learn that information. Even if you don't want to trade options, you can learn a tremendous amount about the market by understanding what is priced into options in terms of volatility, premium, delta, all of that stuff. Um, very important, even if you're just trading the equities that uh, underlie those options that they are trading. Look at that chart for TJX, man, right? Check out the, the long-term chart. I mean, what are we talking about there? We're talking about a 25 bagger almost from 2009, let alone, you know, the volatility that these things have had from the lows, but it was on a one-way trip already. And then eBay, yeah, a little bit of a different story. eBay, back to where you were in about 2018 prices, and pretty remarkable when you look at it from 2004, you're at 25 bucks, you're only sitting at 43. Nonetheless, they've been chopping around for a couple of years. Um, maybe somebody in the den can help me out. Does anybody, anybody in the den still use eBay? I know our man, producer Al, loves eBay. Um, and you can still some, find some stuff on there, but I wonder where that niche is, because I'm not in that niche for eBay, you know, in terms of where is that niche that they represent the area that you go to versus an Amazon, uh, a Google Shopping, uh, an Am, you know, a Walmart, a Target. I know it's pre-owned, et cetera, um, but I feel like Facebook Marketplace to that degree is a huge area that competes with them. I've sold things on Facebook Marketplace myself. Pretty simple to do. If you haven't tried it, folks, you got some stuff in the household you want to sell. You know, I am, I am no Facebook champion in terms of championing that company in Zuckerberg, but the stock price don't lie, as they say, and the marketplace is just one small caveat, but I've sold many things. As Tommy's gotten older, right, old strollers, put them up for sale, somebody just comes, picks them up, easy enough, stuff like that. So where does eBay fall in there if many people who used to buy stuff, I mean, I know it still serves, it, but nonetheless, eBay, they'll be covering it along with TJX and one other equity coming up on Fast Market at 12 today with our man Kevin Hicks. And yeah, let's jump back to a little Fed discussion, man. So Kevin was talking about it. We get some pretty infor important inflation data. It is pretty interesting. I didn't even realize it's creeping that quickly. Next Friday is March 8th, man, which is when we get non-farm payrolls. And then you're talking about 
a week and a half from then is the next Fed meeting. Okay. Now you jump over in terms of this article. Okay, this is from Bloomberg out early this morning. Fed rate cuts are likely to be slow, but not necessarily steady. Okay, in the 1995 soft landing, the Fed cut, then held for three meetings. So it's interesting to think about how they're going to do this. Okay. Because what do they have right now? Markets thinking about June is when they're going to begin cutting. And it is going to be interesting what their strategy is in terms of one and done for a while. Are they going every other meeting? It's going to matter how quickly they go one cut and then from there. And it's interesting that that's the conversation though right now. That is potentially the conversation right now. A cut is going to be coming. Anything can change with the data. But then what do they do if after the first one? We'll finish it up. We'll take a look at that article. We'll talk about some other equities, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back for the open. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You're looking at an S&P positive by four points, trading at 5,084. NASDAQ 100 positive by 25. The Dow slightly in the red by 48 points, hanging on to 39,070 right now. Listen, S&P, all things considered. Okay, you back things up. You put things on a three-year weekly. We were talking about this A to B, C to D. Doesn't mean you can't power ahead of it, but right now, man, you know, thinking maybe a little bit of a consolidation to potentially a slight pullback. We'll see. Uh, our man Tim Ward is going to be on the Tom O'Brien show with my dad this afternoon. Okay. And I did the program on Thursday for my dad. And it was interesting talking to Tim. 
in terms of the strength in this market, the potential for a slight pullback hesitation, but in the grand scheme of things. So if you're talking about a run, there was a thousand points from where we were in October. And that correlates exactly to the run that you had from the lows of October of last year, 3,600 up to 4,600. You do basically a 50% retracement from those lows right to that price level, depending on where you pick, okay? I took the bodies, you could take the candle, you take the candle, it almost lines up exactly at 50% in terms of that retracement. Nonetheless, you pull back to near 50% and boom, you skyrocket another thousand points, okay? The market needs to breathe a little bit. The market has two consecutive 1,000 point rallies over a period of the last 16 months and over that time, it is up now from 3,500 to 5,100, which is a 45.7% acceleration. I'm ballparking numbers, okay? That's that's 1,600 point acceleration up to 5,100 off of 3,500. And the reason why that's very important as well is that's not cherry picking some COVID low to show you how volatile things are. That's just taking the low of 3,500 when you could make the legitimate case that in October of 2022, you're trading at 3,500. Yes, you're cherry picking that low, okay? But you came into COVID, folks, at a price level of 3,200. You still were at a price level of about 3,500. So you were up about 9% over a period of just over two years in the market when you came into COVID, and then you have consecutive thousand point runs in the market totaling 45.7 percent over a period of 14 to 16 months now i'm talking about a digestion a potential consolidation area okay and we are very early in the stages of ai and i think nvidia proved that to put it lightly but you have to realize the context of where we currently sit in terms of the acceleration that we've had two consecutive 1,000 point runs since October of 2022. NVIDIA shares, you're up another $2 this morning. Hang it tough, man, right near 800. Remember, 800 is what puts that thing right at 2 trillion. Nice, easy round numbers. For NVIDIA, you jump around to some of the other equities. Amazon shares, down about 2 tenths percent right now. Apple shares, basically flat, 181.19. Jump over to Google, up about two tenths percent. Tesla shares this morning, catching a slight bid, up by four dollars or two percent to the upside, two hundred three fifty one. You jump over to Meta, they catch a bid, up by half a percent from Meta. You jump over to Boeing, and yeah, those durable goods. Pretty remarkable how Boeing just drives so much of the action in the durable goods. It would make sense with the type of value that they're talking about, whether you sell planes or you don't. You check out Boeing shares. You know the one case you can make is that you're back to this area that was support for. A pretty predominant part of the beginning of the last year at $200. Maybe you set your stop right below then. Nothing to say this thing doesn't come down to the October 23rd low. Markets are sitting at all-time highs. And think about it. The S&P came into 2021, folks, at $4,800. we are up almost another $300 in the S&P, okay, which is a rise of about six and a quarter percent from where we kicked off the year, 4800 to 5100 300-point acceleration on a 4800-point index. Okay. In that same time, you've had Boeing drop from 260 to 200. Okay, even as the market has drifted even higher, giving back almost the entirety of the gains that we've had since that October run. But nonetheless, you're back a little bit against the wall. But yeah, there's a real problem with the brand, man. I was listening to Bloomberg early this morning, and there's no way I'm going to book a flight without finding out if I'm on that Boeing 737 Max. I was looking at the airlines that it's on. I think it's United, Southwest. Maybe somebody else can help me out. There's four airlines. I'll find them, folks. I'll find them, and I'll let you know by the end of the program so you can keep your eye on it as well. But how remarkable is it that the tide had shifted? Now, Jonathan Farrow's on there saying he doesn't pay attention. So everybody's not paying attention yet, okay? It's not that I'm paying attention, though, and I never thought that you'd actually look at an airline ticket, look at a flight that you were thinking about booking to determine what kind of airplane that you'd be flying to try and make a calculation of whether it's worth it safety-wise, to fly that airline for the price you're looking at. And that's actually where things are, which is a remarkable testament to the brand destruction that they've had. And it all has to do with um, quality. 
and you can't be thinking about quality when you're on an airplane, and somehow that's where we find ourselves. And you're seeing it hit on durable goods this morning. All right, we get a little bit of a pullback on the open right now. S&P is barely positive by one. Dow right now dropping a bit. We lose 39,000. We're at 38,995. Bitcoin currently trading up $2,500 at 57855 right now. You jump over to Ethereum, up 76 bucks. That's 2.4% to the upside, 3315 We check in on crude. Crude catches a bit to 78.15. We're at 75.84 as of yesterday. Now, jump around to some of the articles here in terms of crude. I mean, this one. How does this article even get written by CNBC, man? Oil prices fall as Biden signals Gaza ceasefire is possible by next Monday. Okay, I saw the clip. He signaled it's possible. Anything is possible. And, it, you know, he's saying his national security advisors are saying they're close. He's hoping for a ceasefire by the end of the weekend. Those words do matter. But oil prices fall. I think this was last night, right? Pretty sure that clip was from last night. Yeah, he told reporters... In New York City, I'm pretty sure he was eating ice cream. Um, the president said there's been an agreement by the Israelis that they would not engage in activities during Ramadan as well in order to give us time to get all the hostages out. But then you have Hamas officials downplaying those hopes for a ceasefire. Okay. But, I mean, where is the pullback in crude? Right? Just pay attention to these, man. Um, you talk about short-lived in terms of that one. Crude, up another 56 cents. We're pushing $78 right now. Keep your eye on that upper boundary, man, because we break that upper boundary. Where are you going? You're probably going to 90 bucks. You break 80, you're going to 90. That was the high back there in September of 2023, 91.88, and there is nothing in the way of crude getting up to that price level. I don't know why it's going to do it, but it seems like it wants it, man, as it's pushing higher prices, even in the face of potentially a ceasefire with the Middle East war going on between Israel and Palestine, and Hamas, I should say. Yeah, I don't see any pullback, though, as we got markets dipping a bit. And where that really gets complex is how the conversation begins to shift if we start getting higher energy prices built into the inflation numbers. Because at a time when we've had headline numbers for inflation sinking, helped dramatically by the price of crude, okay, core has been sticky, Look at our benchmarks for the price of crude, folks. Okay, crude was under $80 for all of last year up until about August to September. You start pushing higher crude prices above 80 bucks that comps now into the headline inflation number, that is going to drag down discretionary income. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have markets now slipping into the red. S&P's off by three. NASDAQ 100 dips to negative by 25. Dow off by 115 points right now. How about the Russell, though, hanging on to gains by 20? How about Viking Therapeutic? Well, Macy's, uh, let's check how Macy's and Lowe's are doing, actually, in the open. I was going to say that they were trading lower, but not so much, man. The market likes that one. They're up by a dollar. They're up by 5.5% after dipping a, a bit lower. Looks like the uh, the plan for revitalization, the market may be hip to. You jump over to Lowe's, and they get a rebound as well. Look at that. Macy's and Lowe's trade higher after dipping lower on some weak numbers. Not bad. Now, jumping back to Viking Therapeutics. Is it VKTX? VKTX is their symbol. Uh, weight loss drugs, the new holy grail. Viking Therapeutics up by 80.5%. You back it up on the daily, it's been quite a run, man. What, from eight bucks on their last earnings go around, uh, excuse me, two seasons ago in October with the market low at eight. You're going to open at, uh, we'll call it $70. Look at that gap from 40 to 69. We put it back to the short term time frame. There's your acceleration on their numbers. And yeah, it's pretty decent results, man. In terms of the trial, followed 170 patients with obesity, some of whom received different dose sizes of the injectable drug or placebo. Those who received weekly doses of treatment lost, and this is where I was like, up to. What is up to? Up to, yeah, okay, that, that could be up to. Everybody could lose nothing, and then one person could lose 14.7. I'm, I'm sure, I'm hopeful that's not a misrepresentation of the data, right? But you can see how certain small words can change the meaning of details. But nonetheless... 13 weeks, you're losing 15% of your body fat. Folks, if you just weigh 200 pounds, that's a 30-pound weightless. And um, most people in this are probably going to be weighing more than 200 pounds. You go to 300 pounds, and you're talking about a 45-pound weight loss over a period of three weeks. Percentage-wise, up to 88% of patients who receive the drug, known as VK2735, achieved at least 10% weight loss. Okay, and again, though, up to 80, you know, I know it's all verbiage. In the interest of trials and how they cite those numbers, but it was just 4% of those who did not receive the treatment. I mean, pretty substantial numbers. You're only talking about a trial of 170 people, okay? Notably, there was no evidence of a plateau in weight reduction at week 13 for any dose of the drug, suggesting that further weight loss might be achieved by keeping patient, patients on the treatment longer. I'm sure they like to hear that as they get to keep pushing out product. The drug demonstrated encouraging safety in patients following a 13-week trial period. They appeared to tolerate it well. The full phase two data um, are going to be presented at medical conferences, plans to meet with the FDA to discuss further steps, obviously. Um, but yeah, and um, pretty remarkable, man, how all these drugs are coming about right now. You do give back some of those gains, but you're still up by 70 percent folks 65 10 pretty strong numbers only 170 people but yeah pretty strong numbers to say the least okay jumping back to what we were talking about early in the program talking about the fed and the potential where they go from the first potential cut there's a saying about how the fed manages interest rates they go up the escalator and down the elevator this time though it might not be the case now we don't know though right something can always break we've seen it happen pretty closely once 
commercial real estate has been talked about for some time right now. And we are approaching the point that cuts will probably be appropriate, even from the Fed's stance, okay? How patient can they be with this data? I mean, we have credit card balances approaching um, levels that are well off the lows that we've seen, delinquencies rising to that degree as well. But the fundamentals of this cutting cycle also look a lot different. The Fed typically lowers interest rates in response, but nonetheless, uh, the U.S. economy is resilient. 3.7% unemployment rate. The thing that you want to consider, which is why I want to get to this article, is that the Fed wants to eventually be at the natural rate, the neutral rate, okay, that does not inspire growth or pullback. It's just the natural rate neutral rate that allows the economy to grow at a healthy yearly growth rate that does not overheat or underheat. And that is the true um, mandate for the Federal Reserve, right? Full employment and price stability. Those are the two. We have 3.7% unemployment rate right now. So there's your full employment. So their attention must shift to price stability, which is what the chairman said many times. But you also have to consider how high they are, okay? Check out this chart in terms of where we are on these interest rates, man. These highs have not lasted for long, going back to basically the 80s. And yes, the data's been persistent, but we're approaching the level that we're not at 80s inflation right now, okay? We are at inflation that's hotter than we're comfortable with, but we're not at infla 80s inflation. And you see how quickly the slide has been most of the time. You see how quickly the rise was this time around. And it's one thing you're going to have to calculate. The cuts are coming, okay? But you want to consider how quickly they're going to come because inflation is still persistent. And I think that CPI gave us all a lesson that they're not going to march down by a percentage to two full percentage points to bring the number back to 3.5%. They're right now at 5.5%. That gives them pr plenty of room to bring that number maybe back to 5, maybe 4.75, maybe 4.5, where they can feel pretty confident that they're still restrictive in terms of where they are versus the neutral rate. But you start getting back to 4, 3.7. If you're dealing with inflation at 3.5, 3.7, and 4, and you're only sitting at that same level, you might not be as restrictive as you want to be. So there is room here, but how quickly are they going to bring that down? That's where we find out. And that's only if things persist in a healthy manner, let alone if you really get some stress. That's where things could potentially ramp up to the downside. But right now, it doesn't seem like that's the case, man. If anything, inflation be seems to be the worry. As the economy seems it's pretty healthy, man, with the market sitting at 5,100. You jump around to some of the other FANG stocks. Apple gives it back on the open, down about four tenths percent. Salesforce is out with their numbers. Uh, I think it is Wednesday that they're out with their numbers. Salesforce, quite a run for Salesforce. Back it up on the three-year weekly, man. You get it all back from the highs, basically. From 311 down to 126, you're back to near 300. For Salesforce, up, uh, excuse me, down 1% right now. You jump over to Meta shares, up about three tenths. We take a look at some of the streamers. Netflix shares, up about eight tenths percent right now. Disney up half a percent right now as the market's slightly in the red. You jump over to Warner Brothers Discovery. Yeah, it's a tough one, man. Down about six tenths percent right near all-time lows for Warner Brothers Discovery. You jump over to Paramount shares. Pretty similar story, man. At 11.08, all-time lows, 10.51 late last year for Paramount. We jump over to Boeing shares. Sitting at about 231. We take a look at Home Depot. As lows trading a little bit higher in the pre-market. Home Depot, uh, excuse me, on the open. Lows up by a about half a percent right now, uh, excuse me, Home Depot, and Lowe's up by 1.6% right now as they catch an acceleration. We check in on Macy's with their numbers this morning as well. Bumping up against that line that I put, and that's basically taking the consolidation area you had back here in the beginning of 2022. You touch the highs, and again, I like to use a little bit almost like linear regression, okay? where that exactly falls, but you can see no matter where you fall in those highs from 2022, and then you kind of take the area that you were at in terms of the highs of late 2022, the consolidation area in 2023, that somewhat correlates to the highs we had at the end of 2023. We're right back at that area. And they have a turnaround plan that's necessary. We'll find out if it works. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. Don't go away. We'll be right back.
The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps down by one, NASDAQ 100 up by two, Dow in the red right now by about three-tenths percent or 124 points in the red, off by about three-tenths, 38,992 in the Russell, holding on to gains by about eight-tenths percent. You were all the way up to 2,058 in the Russell, quite an acceleration. You jump over to some other equities with some action this morning, Zoom. You were Zooming on a lot higher. This company, man, it is a tough one, folks. Even on today, when you're up 5.6%, you're up $3.57 right now to 66.65. They beat on the top and the bottom lines. Growth would have been faster if not for a sales reorganization, is what they said. They were up by 13%, though, okay? Earnings, a buck 22 versus a buck 15. Revenue, 1.15 versus 1.13. I saw somewhere, I think they have a $1.5, $1.5 billion buyback which replaces the billion dollar buyback that they had in place that just expired for the fiscal year they're looking for 485 versus 488 4.6 billion in revenue they were looking for the market was at 471 versus with 4.65 billion so they're going to make a little bit more money but the revenue not quite there and nonetheless you give it back on the open you know i mean you're talking about trading at prices for zoom that you were almost trading at at the end of 2022. And it just can't find a bid, man. Be careful of that one for sure. 
What other, what, other, what what other equities do we have moving this morning? Yeah, AutoZone. That's the one we want to take a look at, man. Check out this. AutoZone, up another 5%. Now, I just gave Zoom a little bit of grief for being up 5%, okay? That's because it can't find a bid for an extended period of time. AutoZone never trades lower for an extended period of time, man. Look at this acceleration. You come into COVID at 1,200 or 2,900. This not, thing's not stopping, let alone you back things up. It's a one-way trip, man. Absolutely remarkable that they continue to beat, and they do. As they beat with earnings of $28.89, the market was looking for about $26, and they come in revenue 3.85 versus 3.84. That stock just does not go down, man. Nonetheless. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the S&Ps. We're basically flat as we come into uh, the end of the hour. NASDAQ 100, we'll call that flat as well. Dow in the red right now. We got Basil Chapman. He's coming up next, folks. We got Steve Rhodes, live at 11, fast market at 12. You heard him. They're talking TJ Maxx. They're talking eBay out there. My dad will be back three to four.